Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum viewers. Welcome to my channel. And in today's video, as you can see the heading, we are, we'll try to study the derivation of sine law because if we are dealing either acute angle or obtuse angle triangle and we are determined to find out its unknown sides or unknown interior angles, then definitely the trigonometric ratios or Pythagoras theorem are not going to help us out. So we need some other tools or formulas to evaluate those missing uh, terms. So for that purpose, two laws which are so termed as sine laws and cosine laws are going to help us out. So in this video, we are going to focus on the sine law. So we'll try to study here how this law has been derived. What is the strategy? What is the way? So for that purpose, I would like to draw here a non-right triangle, or in other words, you can either draw an obtuse angle or acute angle triangle. So let me draw the triangle first. So here you go. You can see this is a beautiful acute angle triangle. All the interior angles are acute in nature. The angles are less than 90 degree, obviously. So here, let me just name the vertices here. So I just call it B, for instance, and this is my A. Conventionally, we prefer X, Y, Z, or A, B, C, we know that. So, okay, so this is it. So we are going to represent the interior angles as angle C, angle capital D, angle capital A. That's how we are going to represent the interior angles. As far as the length of the sides of the triangle is concerned, the side which is right opposite to this vertex B, its length or its magnitude is going to be expressed by small b, okay? This small b represent this is the length of the side which is right opposite to vertex B and so forth. In the same way, the length which is right opposite to your vertex A, which is BC line segment, its length is going to be expressed with small a, and likewise, this length is going to be express, expressed with small c. Okay, but what we have to do now, uh, first of all, I, uh, I'm going to construct an altitude of this triangle by falling a projection or by falling a, a perpendicular line exactly on AC falling from the word XP. Okay, for that purpose, I can either use a compass to draw it accordingly or also I can use directly a ruler so I prefer to use a compass and then I'm going to draw altitude then I will remove those arcs okay so let us try to draw the altitude from the vertex B falling perpendicularly on your AC okay because altitude is obviously a vertical height a perpendicular height so Okay, I've stretched my compass up to suitable radius and I have just let I'm going to draw here an arc like this. Okay. So for that purpose you can see that it is intersecting AC at this point and this point. So this is beyond AC, so I have to make some extension here. I am going to extend this AC line segment, okay, a bit ahead so that I could get the intersection point easily. So let me extend this line through a dotted line. So let's see how it looks like. Okay, now either you can keep the same radius or you can change it, it's up to you. Now you're going to put your needle at these two intersection points and we are going to draw the arcs like this. And like this okay now you're having this point of intersection and you just call it you didn't you just call this point either as X capital X now we are going to draw uh, or we can we are going to join this point B and this X so that is going to be the altitude of this triangle from the word XP with respect to word XP okay so let us draw here the altitude BX okay Okay, that's how it is beautifully drawn and I'm going to represent, you can see this is the height from here to here. This is the height or the altitude of this triangle ABC. And I'm going to represent this height from this point to this point 
I'm going to represent it with my small edge with B at the subscript because it has been originated from vertex B. That's why I just wrote B here. Okay. Now uh, you can see that it is falling right perpendicularly on AC. So I'm going to have two right triangles here. One triangle is, let me name this point. I just call this point as D. Okay. So one triangle is BDA. Another triangle is BDC. All right. So... Let us try to do some calculation here. If I talk about my triangle BDA, if I talk about this triangle, okay, so you can notice here that with respect to triangle, or with respect to angle A, this is the adjacent side, this is the opposite side, right? So if I use here sine of angle A, because I'm talking about my sine law, so I talk about my sine of angle A is equal to the opposite side upon the hypotenuse which is small c okay so this is it so here my h of b can be expressed as small c times sine of angle a all right in the same way if i talk about my my and i call it equation number one now in the same way i'm going to discuss my triangle bdc all right so now we are going to discuss triangle BDC. Over here, let me just move the page up a little bit. Okay, now it's fine. Now over here, we can see that with respect to interior angle C, capital C, DC is the adjacent, DB is the opposite. So here, if I talk about my sine of angle C, is equals to opposite side which is my edge of B upon hypotenuse which is my A okay so in this way my edge of B is now A times sine of my angle C this is my equation number two now you can compare these two equations because both are representing edge of B so once when I compare my equation one and two I come to know that C of sine angle A is equals to A times sine of angle C. Now let me swap the signs on both sides here and there. So it becomes sine C upon sine of angle C is equals to A upon sine of angle A. And I just close this in a, in a box just to keep it highlighted okay now what i have to do now i need to draw one more altitude either with respect to vertex a or with respect to vertex c okay so one more altitude i need to draw here so for this purpose i select uh, vertex c and i'm going to draw here my altitude it is going to fall perpendicularly on my a b okay so let us draw this thing and for this purpose i will directly show here uh the altitude instead of showing the working okay okay i've just maintained here the same strategy like what i did over here i just draw an arc just which was intersecting my a b line segment with some extension at these two points and then with another suitable radius or keeping the same i just put i just mark these two arcs by putting my needle at this intersection point and at this intersection point. So I just got a point Y over here. I'm going to join this Y with my C. I'm going to get the altitude with respect to vertex C. Okay, so let us join C and Y. Okay, that's how it looks like. And I just make a distinction by using a different color. So this is the vertex, uh, this is the height originating from vertex C with respect to base AB, okay? So you can see here that this line is falling right perpendicularly at uh, uh, on the line segment AB. So I'm going to call this height from here to here as my edge of C, okay? I just call it edge of C. All right, now I'm having two uh triangles here with respect to edge of c and i just call it point e i just call this point as point e okay now having two triangles b e c 
and C E A. All right, I'm having two triangles here. So over here, we are going to make the calculations with respect to these two triangles, B E C and C E A. All right, so let us do the calculation by considering the triangle B E C first. Okay, so as I told you that we are discussing here sine law, so we are going to focus on the sines over here. Okay, so if I just focus on this line in, in this triangle B C A, so with respect to angle B, this B E is the adjacent side and E C or C E is the opposite side, B C is the hypotenuse having length A. Okay, so if I talk about my sine of angle B, if I talk about sine of angle B, then it is equal to the opposite side upon hypotenuse. Okay, so here my edge of C is A times sine of angle B. I just call it equation number three. Okay, in the same way, you just talk about your triangle CEA. You talk about this triangle. Now over here with respect to vertex, uh, with respect to interior angle A, AE is the adjacent, CE is the opposite, and this AC is the hypotenuse having vertex, having length B. So my sine of angle A here is equal to H of C upon B this time. Okay, so H of C is equals to B times sine of interior angle A. I call this equation number four. Now both equations are representing H of C, so I can compare these two equations. So comparing three and four, we come to know that A of sine of angle B is equals to B of sine of angle A. Let us make a nice swapping. So A upon sine of angle A is equals to B upon sine of angle B. And let us close this equation as well in a beautiful box. Now if we just observe these two boxes, we come to know that sine of A upon sine of angle A is equals to this and this. So if we just combine these two equations you can you can f easily you can write it like this it is once when you try to merge these two equations it's going to be a upon sine of angle a is equal to b upon sine of angle b is equal to c upon sine of angle c okay so this is what you call a sine law the sine law actually says that the ratio of the length uh, upon the sine of its opposite vertex is similar in all uh, in all cases okay so this is what you call a sine law uh, this sign law can it's extremely helpful in finding out the unknown sides and the unknown interior angles of acute or obtuse angle triangles all right so that's all for today and if you find this video helpful i humbly request you to subscribe my channel hit on the like and share this video as much as you can and also hit on the bell icon for the new updates Take good care of yourself, inshallah, I'll see you with some new helpful videos in future. Allah Hafiz.